All right, ladies and gentlemen, looks like we are live. I'm gonna go ahead and let some people pile on here in the chat. Hopefully we are looking good and sounding good. I'm gonna wait for the okay from some of you guys. Let me know, make sure that our audio sounds good. Let me know, make sure that our video quality is nice and good. You never know what you're gonna run into sometimes with these streams, but hopefully everything is looking good, sounding good, and then we will dive into it today. It has been uh, far too long, but I'm super excited to, uh, to have all of you guys here joining us. So let's see. Who do we have in the chat today? Gail Saunders, Gobax, Kevin Hawthorne, uh, Andre, a lot of the usual suspects. All right. Looks good. Are we lagging a little? I see a little bit of a lag. Hopefully that kind of... Uh, works itself out here. To me, it uh, sounds good. Video quality sketchy, bit laggy. Hmm. Audio good, video is choppy. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll just uh, we'll just keep trucking through. As long as the audio sounds good, hopefully the lag will sort of uh, work itself out. You know how that goes sometimes. So, let's see. Okay, now I see the error on my end. Let's see. This right here is why I can't do these more often, unfortunately. Just running into running into issues. I mean, the internet, I, I just got a Wi-Fi extender too, and I already have good internet. Every time I check the connection, test the internet speed, says we're good to go. There's a pretty decent chance that I have something wrong in the settings of OBS. That's where we run the uh, streaming software through. Volume's good, video is off big time. Hmm. Let's see. Da, da, da. Hopefully everybody is having a great Friday though. Anyway, I'm probably gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna change the output here. And hopefully that will, oh, is the video catching up? Video is good. It's good now. Okay, cool. Let's roll with it. I don't want to have to close out the stream. I hate doing that just to change some settings. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and just have a fun q and A. It's been far too long since we've done one of these. Uh, last year we were on quite the streak of doing them, you know, almost weekly. And, and that's something I'd love to do because I really, 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 really enjoy uh, just, just hanging out with you guys and having fun. Are you going to do another full shoe live? I definitely have that planned out. The thing that I for sure want to make sure happens the next time I do, you know, an 8 to 12 hour stream is that I'm doing something uh, very different than the last time. So the last time we painted a Chunky Dunky Jordan 1, obviously it being a Jordan 1, it being an all leather shoe, I really, really would like to do a uh, um, a, a different shoe, a different theme where, we're, where I'm able to teach new things. So if you've already watched that one, of course, there's going to be a ton of crossover but I'll be able to provide a lot of new input for, you know, whether it's just like, let's say for example, like a Nike Roche, you know what I mean? Where we're working with a totally different material. Now I don't do a lot of Roche commissions commissions nowadays, but nonetheless, um, I would like it to be a, a very different shoe like that. So I'd love to hear, what are you guys working on? What's everybody been uh, cooking up this week? Let's hear some of the, uh, the cool themes, the cool different silhouettes that, uh, Everybody's been uh, cooking up this week. I, this week, have actually been, for the last few days, working on some very simple shoes. I do an Employee of the Month shoe for the Detroit Pistons every month for about the last year. Um, my buddy Mike, who was actually the one who, who was my connect for the entire Brooklyn Nets project that I did years back, he moved on to uh, work with the Pistons and um, he just orders a ton of shoes from me throughout the year. And then he said, hey, you know, I'd like to do um, an employee of the month shoe. And so every month I get a little kind of questionnaire that comes in from them about the employee of the month. And it tells me, you know, if they're, what their college they went to, what their favorite TV show is, what their hobbies are. And sometimes they're like, hey, I know that this person would really appreciate something for their alma mater, something for their college, or they're a huge bad boy Pistons era fan, whatever the case is, they'll give me a little bit of input. And sometimes they just say, go ahead and do whatever you, uh, whatever you want with them. So, uh, 
it's awesome because he keeps me uh, super busy. So incredibly thankful for that. So let's see. Jaw Customs said I did a John Wick theme this week. That's pretty dope. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Sasuke and Naruto Air Force One. Sweet, sweet. LR Toon says I finished up a Goku Air Force One. That's pretty cool. Uh, Froz Custom says, what is a good airbrush to get if you haven't used one before? I recommend the Badger Patriot 105. That's always my go-to, for sure. Uh, Ron Gotzol says, hey, I'm curious. Do you have a multiple airbrush setup? I'm strongly considering buying another airbrush and wondering if you think it's worth it. Ron, I think that that's a, um, a lot of, I, I've definitely seen, like, especially, um, Anybody who seems to be like airbrushing all day long, like if you look at uh, just a funny example that I think a lot of people can relate to, if you've ever been to one of those airbrush shops like in your local mall where they're airbrushing t-shirts or maybe at an amusement park where they have those, there's a really good chance they're running a multiple airbrush setup and you know they might be working on, on t-shirts for example. So they're going to be using the same type of paints but they might have multiple airbrushes for really quick color changes for their design process. Now, there's not, um, because we need to let the paint dry on shoes, just for me personally, I've never uh, felt the need that my design process requires a multiple airbrush setup. So, you know, the time it takes to color swap, to me, that's just dry time that the shoes need anyway. So I've never, I've never run into any uh, issue with that. So, um, uh, but I do think I've definitely seen some customizers running a uh, a multiple gun setup. So, you know what I mean? If you think it's going to speed up your workflow, um, I could totally see that working. To me, it's like, oh boy, now I have two airbrushes to maintain, or, or multiple, you know, I have two or three or four airbrushes to maintain and clean and whatnot. So, um, that's uh, that, that just sounds like more work to me. But let's see here. Okay, YouTube is not receiving enough. Damn YouTube, man. Damn YouTube. I'm telling you, it's not the it's not the internet process. It's not the the internet connection here, unfortunately. So, I think it's just something that I have going on in the in the back of the streaming software OBS that I, I'm telling you guys. I, I do so much research on internet forums for OBS to try to find out what exactly it could be. And last year, it seemed like I I had it set up pretty well. You know, we didn't run into too many issues when we were doing a stream almost every single week. And um, then our main computer, we went ahead and wiped it just to give it a, a refresh. And so all of the settings that I had set up in OBS went away. And I thought I, I, I remember the video that I watched on how to configure it. Did that video again. And for whatever reason, this time around, not working for me as well. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 uh, our, our, artis forgive me if I say it wrong, but Artistique Custom says, Instagram been shadow banning me and Etsy closed my website after five years for two different hype beast designs I did. Oh man, that's unfortunate. Uh, we posted a video this week talking about the, uh, uh, LV Air Force One collab that, uh, uh, Nike Virgil, uh, just announced with, I think there was 21 pairs or something like that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, and a lot of people reached out to me and said that, you know, they had their Etsy taken down. People had their Instagrams taken down, you know, from posting the LV content and whatnot. So that's super unfortunate. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a gray area with, with, it's kind of pick and choose for certain companies when you're doing, you know, trademark IP and whatnot, because, um, a lot of the time, I mean, I've, like I, I've said this before, but I've worked directly with the organizations, the teams and whatnot, and sold their logos in store. I did a project with the Brooklyn Nets where I literally was inside their stadium selling stuff with their logo on it. And, um, but I've heard of the NCAA setting, setting, uh, shutting down people's Instagrams for posting like, you know, USC inspired pairs and whatnot. So it's crazy. It's unfortunate that that happens. And um, hopefully you're still able to uh, keep trucking on. Uh, Kevin Johnson here says, I need a better tutorial on realistic flames. I can't get it right. So we have a, a two minute Tuesday on it actually. And that's definitely one of the videos when I was first learning how to do flames. It's, you just have to rewatch the video and see exactly like, okay, let me try to do it 
just like that and let me keep practicing before I even do it on shoes. Let me do it on paper. Let me do it on cardboard. And realistic flames are tough. Like even if I'm going to do them, I need to like rewatch my video on how to do them because they're just not that, at least in my opinion, they're not that like naturally easy to do. They're tough. So Customs by G says, working on a Bob Marley themed Air Force One. Those will be dope. Excited to see those, uh, Gina. Artist, Artistique Customs, uh, hopefully I'm saying that right, says, how do you think I could avoid the shadow banning? So shadow banning, I mean, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. It seems like everybody nowadays says they're shadow banned. And, um, you know, it could just be a matter of sometimes the algorithm is is trickier for certain people and for artists and whatnot. And, and But it's really just about trying to create engaging content in my opinion that's the uh best way to avoid being shadow banned you know what i mean you want to keep getting your work seen by people if people engage with it then there's a good chance that um you know instagram's gonna keep pushing it out so cody iron man here says what is your opinion with college athletes being able to accept endorsements and how does that affect your business I think that it's about time. You know what I mean? There's a lot of these big time athletes. Like you take a look at somebody like Tim Tebow, like how much money could he have made? Did he, I think he might've played all four years of college ball. How much money could he have made off of his, his name and likeness? You know what I mean? It's crazy. So, and we know that the NCAA is surely making money on it. And how does that affect your business? Well, I'm sure now a lot of these guys are going to want to start, uh, getting custom cleats done, you know? So there'll definitely be a lot more of that in the foreseeable future. Uh, let's see. Fraz Customs here says, this isn't a question, but one of my favorite customs by you was your Eric Ebron custom football cleats. Well, Fraz, you'll have to let me know which ones you're referring to because I've probably done a hundred plus cleats for uh, my buddy Ebron now at this point. So Clarissa here says, how are you doing, Dylan? When's baby Delilah due? Thank you so much, Clarissa. I'm doing great. Another day in paradise. Baby Delilah is due on 9-9. So we are just uh, two months I think Brittany just turned 30 weeks, so we are uh, uh, 10 weeks away and uh, super excited. We just had a, a little bit of a, a baby shower last weekend, so that was exciting. And now um, just just getting ready, getting ready 10 more weeks and getting everything prepped and ready to go. As ready as you can be for another one. So thank you for that. Uh, let's see, Lori, Lori Lee de Dios says, question, would you charge the same for a customization on an original pair as well as a fake one? So the, the, the kind of unfortunate part about working on fake pairs is that they're going to have, uh, you know, cheaper, lesser quality materials. So they're not going to paint as nicely and whatnot. So w would you charge the same? I mean, yeah, like it, the canvas kind of doesn't matter for how long it's going to take. You know what I mean? So definitely, but yeah, customizing on fake ones, you know, and I'll never say, oh, you actually shouldn't do it, but it just, it sucks that, you know, then there's a good chance that like the shape is off with fake pairs. So, you know, is it something that you want to post in your portfolio? A lot of real like collectors would be able to spot it and say that, oh, it's a fake pair. So yeah, no, that's what, uh, that's, uh, that's what I could really say about that one. Uh, Gabak says, if you have so much lag, you can try to stream in 720p and not in 1080p. It will need less internet. Yeah, so I do have it set to 1080p right now. Um, I think I'll, I'll probably try that. It's so unfortunate because, um, I try to have all the equipment to put out the best quality, uh, product. You know what I mean? Like these videos live forever on the YouTube page. So I want anybody who finds them for the first time, I want to have a good first impression. So I'd like to have a nice high quality stream. So I'd rather have a 1080p stream than a 720 if they're finding us for the first time. So I totally understand that like the message is still the same and all you guys who are here, no matter what, you could care less. You'd rather just have good quality and have me jumping right away than always complaining about whatever the heck's going on on the back end. Um, but yeah, I might, I might have to try that one, uh, next time. Customs by G says, can you tell more about the sax event? Sounds so cool. Yeah. So I did, uh, I posted a video last week talking about this event that I did over Father's Day weekend for sax fifth Avenue here in Chicago. And, um, it was a live painting, uh, event that I did on the day before Father's Day. And it was for four hours. Uh, in downtown Chicago at Saks Fifth Avenue. This is a eight floor, I think it's, I think it's seven floor 
uh, store. That's how big it is. And the entire seventh floor is just men's footwear. That's how big this store is. And it was really cool because at, at, at this Saks, all of the shoes are um, designer high-end shoes. Like they don't even have your typical Jordans, your Air Forces and whatnot. It's all Gucci shoes, Alexander McQueen, you know, Dolce & Gabbana, all that type of stuff. Dior shoes, so so Balenciagas, you know what I mean? So it was really cool. And um, they had reached out to me uh, a couple weeks prior and said, hey, you know, would you be interested? And um, I said, of course, absolutely. You know, what are the details? And um, they said, okay, you know, it'll be four hours. We're able to pay you this amount, which, is, which was awesome. It was a, a very healthy amount. And, uh, you know, we just want to have you in store. You could display some of your work if anybody wants to purchase something in store and then get it personalized a little bit. Uh, that would be very cool. And, um, you know, it's they also were very aware that there's only so much I can do in in four hours, especially when you're not trying to have me work on just one thing for four hours. You want me to potentially work on multiple things. So it's very limited to what we can actually do in terms of, you know, design, you know, so if maybe somebody wants to personalize it with their name or if they want to add maybe a little Chicago skyline, something like that. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I brought shoes to display and I'm able to show off my work to people on Instagram. And a lot of the stuff that people see, of course, is stuff that can take 40 to 60 hours. Not what can I get done in the next 20 minutes while you stand here. You know what I mean? So um, they were like, you know, if there's anything that you don't feel like doing, totally feel free to say no. So it was it was really cool that they basically told me like, hey, just you can kind of look at this as an opportunity to pass out business cards, meet people, hang out. And I'm like, okay, you know what I mean? Sounds awesome. These are already people who are spending a bunch of money on high-end footwear. So they have no no problem, you know what I mean, hearing that shoes cost thousand, $2,000, it's not going to surprise them. Whereas, you know, if you were hanging out in, uh, you know what I mean, like a, like a uh, let's just say like a Foot Locker or something like that, and you're telling people, oh yeah, these cost $2,500 or whatever the case is, they're going to say, well, you know, they might not understand it as much. So it was a, it was a uh, great clientele to be in front of. For sure. And uh, first live event that I did, which was awesome, you know what I mean? Been a year and a half or whatever the case is since uh, I could really, you know, uh, be doing something like that, which was which was awesome. And I'm, I'm definitely excited to do more of them. And I already have a couple other ones uh, most likely lined up that uh, we've started to discuss on. So that was really cool. And um, I think the reason that I even qualified or was approached for something like that in, in my opinion is because I think I have a, 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 a really clean looking website and a clean looking portfolio on Instagram it looks professional you know what I mean it doesn't look like oh here's just this somebody who's you know painting uh, in their uh, in their closet and everything's just pictures taken on a, on a dirty workspace no like it looks serious so I think that that's how that's going to be how you sort of start to get approached by bigger brands and, and companies and whatnot. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Always, always really cool to, to get outside of the studio and just interact with people and, and tell them about what you're doing and pass out a ton of business cards and hopefully drive a lot of business uh, for the future. That's what I think live events are, are best for, really just driving future business and having people see your work, especially in person for the first time because... So often we just see it um, on Instagram and in tiny little pictures and there's nothing like actually picking up a shoe in person and seeing it and seeing all the detail and seeing the cleanliness and seeing how it actually can look like a factory pair. So I love that. Uh, Clarissa says, at David Jesus, I asked him on a Facebook Live what her name was going to be, keeping the D family name strong. Yep, yep, that was... Uh, that was, uh, as soon as we heard that we were uh, having a baby girl, I knew, I knew I had to keep the D name going. Uh, myself, my dad's name is David, little brother's name is Daniel, first boy is Dexter. So for girls, really came down to, it was good. Delilah I knew was the runaway, but other ones were going to potentially be Danielle, Desiree, 
diamond. I, we weren't going to do diamond. Um, which is funny because I think my parents said they almost were considering naming me that if I was a girl. But um, yeah, so so Delilah Bell de Jesus coming in September. It'll be interesting to see which uh, which of the kids, if at all, take any interest in in uh, in the business and whatnot. You know what I mean. And if they don't, I have absolutely no problem with that. Of course, they could do whatever they want. But it'll be interesting to see. The little boy is more interested in it or if the little girl is more interested in it or if neither of them have any interest in it at all so we'll see uh okay i will get caught up in the chat but i did see a couple super chats came in so let me grab those real quick uh we got a wu-tang fan wucifer that's a funny name sends in a five dollar super chat with a with a little bit of a boss sticker thank you so much for that contribution really appreciate it, it means a lot it really helps the channel grow so thank you for that and then Clarissa sends one in for DCF, a.k.a. the Diaper Contribution Fund. That is funny. Brittany will get a kick out of that one. Congrats and thanks for all the help in the custom sneaker world. Thank you so much, Clarissa. Really appreciate your continued support. CW hopped in the chat. How you going, man? How you doing, bud? I haven't heard from you in a while. Hopefully everything's going well, man. Uh, okay, let's see here. Suns and Six. Yeah, I can't believe it. Chris Paul got himself to an NBA Finals. Good for him, man. I'm excited. Hopefully CP can get one. Um, ba -ba -ba. Q the Mo says, do I need to cut around my stencils and tape before removing them? It's been lifting a little paint and not giving Chris blind. So there's a good chance that you're applying a little bit too much paint. That typically is more likely to happen if you're hand painting the stencils rather than if you are airbrushing the stencils I've noticed and if you don't give them enough dry time. So no, you shouldn't need to and there's just a potential that you're not using the correct vinyl. I usually recommend Oracle 811, and uh, I, I don't run into that too often, so. Let's see. Uh, Shahan O'Hara says, did you ever have a hard time finding a spot to paint? I have a small apartment with, like, no room. Do you have any tips? <sighs> Shahan, I was lucky in that the first place that I painted, well, I started on my mom's kitchen table, and then after a while, after then working at, at, at the family computer desk, I finally said, hey, we have a, oh, I have a fly in the studio. Man. Now it's going to be like that episode of Breaking Bad where I'm going to be chasing around a fly all day. Um, let's see. Uh, I had a spare bedroom at my parents' house that was always just kind of used for storage and whatnot that, uh, that my parents uh, thankfully let me, let me use and, and grow the business out of. Then after that, then we moved into a studio downtown until after that we moved uh, to where we are now. But other than that, if you're working in a small apartment, I think that it's going to be r truly just about how well can you store all of the supplies. So purchasing, you know, the best little storage carts that you can have for all of your supplies until you really outgrow the space. And hopefully you're able to, you know, potentially upgrade your, or upgrade your studio space. You know what I mean? Maybe you're able to, it says you're in an apartment. Who knows? Maybe you're able to, maybe the business grows enough to where your next apartment could be a place where you pick up an additional bedroom to, to work out of. That'd be really cool. But you know what I mean? When you're working out of a small space to start, it's really going to be all about storage and uh, trying to be able to separate, you know, your working conditions from your living conditions just so they're not on, on top of each other all the time. So that's tough, but but definitely wish you the best and hopefully you're able to keep growing the business and you can upgrade to a, uh, a bigger spot. Ba, ba, ba. Celine Gale, hopefully I said that right. Is there any product that can be used on soles? I've seen a lot of customs with painted soles, but the paint fell off. But the paint fell off on mine. Unfortunately, I don't believe there is. Um, I think that you can dye certain soles, like a translucent sole on a Jordan um, 11. Or I think that you could potentially dye them to have a dirty look on like an Air Force One or a Jordan One. So we'll actually have a tutorial on that, on like aging your soles. That's a video that I already have filmed and lined up. That's uh, going to be a two minute Tuesday. And that's probably going to be out in the next three to four weeks or so. So also I just want to say thank you guys for, for being patient with us. Uh, here on YouTube, a little bit of a transition period as uh, for about the last six weeks, almost two months now. Um, long time, long time uh, partner of the business, Jason, after four years 
moved on to some other ventures of his own. And so uh, super excited for him for the next chapter. And uh, every once in a while, we're still going to link up and, and do some stuff together video wise. But uh, yeah, for about the last uh, almost two months now, uh, Jason hasn't been with us, so it's just been me doing all of the uh, YouTube content, and uh, it's definitely, of course, you know, four years of working together. It's uh, a lot trickier. It's it's hard to maintain the schedule of one video every single week. That's really tough, especially because it's just the way my brain's wired. I'm always trying to increase the quality of the videos, and I'm always trying to one-up myself, so it's not like... Although, yeah, maybe, hey, I become faster at editing or something like that. It's not like the videos really ever take less time because I'm always just trying to make them better. So um, doing that by myself now definitely presents more of a challenge. But thank you guys for, uh, for, for sticking with it and still tuning in. So that's why there hasn't been, I know there was a couple weeks where I had to, to take off and whatnot and uh, still trying to figure out the best schedule and what's, you know, going to work moving forward. A couple, couple things that I've considered is, is maybe one, you know, recorded video every single week and then um, the next week rather than posting a video to the page doing a live stream like this. So maybe these are every other week and then, you know, a recorded regular typical YouTube videos every other week. That's when I've considered... Um, Something else is Jason and I were just never really that far ahead as far as videos. So that's something that I'd like to do where, you know, just kind of get far ahead where maybe I have 10 videos done or something like that. So then when certain projects come up, I don't have to somehow balance posting this week's YouTube video and whatnot. If I could have some stuff pre-recorded, which uh, just because of crazy conflicting schedules, Jason and I were never that far ahead. The most we were ever ahead is like one to two videos. So if I could plan out some stuff and get ahead with some video content, maybe I could still maintain the, the one video per week. I certainly would love to because um, posting YouTube videos and engaging with you guys, definitely some of my favorite aspects of this career, job, business, and whatnot. So yeah, just a, just a little bit of, like I said, a transition period. So thank you guys for uh, sticking with it. So, okay, let's keep getting caught up here in the chat. Uh, Cameron Shepard says, Hey, I was wondering what would be the easiest way to get rid of adhesion from tape being attached to sneakers for too long? Some videos recommended baby oil. I recommend picking up a glue and residue eraser. If you are lucky enough to have the a dollar store called Dollar Tree in your area, I'm not sure where you're from, Cameron. Um, but if you have a Dollar Tree nearby, head there and try to pick up a glue and residue eraser, and it is a game changer. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Eric Cook says, what's your take on Alpha 6 to Angela? So I have not had a chance to um, use Alpha 6 yet. I've heard basically nothing but good things. Uh, people have said that it's way better in terms of coverage, you know what I mean, as far as like something like taking less coats. A lot of... Uh, People that I talk to who do large amounts of cleats are saying, hey, their white is so strong that we could take a black cleat and make it white in like two coats, which is, you know, absolutely crazy and unheard of. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's usually well, with stuff like that, there's, of course, going to be pros and cons. So I'm interested to see, does it hold up as well long term? What are the potential downfalls to using it? Is it not as durable? Um, so yet to be determined. I'm sort of waiting for other people to hear on that. Alpha 6 did send me some, but I haven't, I of course haven't had the chance to really play with it yet or anything. Um, a, uh, a, 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 a Yaren Customs? A Yaren, I think that's how it is. A Yaren Customs says, are Instagram promotions worth it to get your page out there? If so, do you recommend any pages? So in my opinion, I've said, I've certainly said this one before, when it, but when it comes to marketing, promotion, I think the best thing that you could do is do like free pairs for influencers or something like that. If you're looking, you know, to market, if you're looking to spend some money advertising, I think that you're going to get more, I think that you're going to get a better return on your investment if you do something like that than if you were to uh, promote your post on Instagram or pay a bigger page to, you know, um, post your photos or something like that. Like, I think that if you got a celebrity and influence or something like that to post your work, I think that's when you're going to get a better return on your investment. That's my opinion. 
uh, Dron Will Create says, is, customi is customizing on fakes like a taboo? I want to customize a pair of feezies I have. Um, I mean, it's tough to say, you know, is it a taboo? I guess you could say it's a taboo. There's just the downside of, like, if you post them and people could spot that they're fake, then you know what I mean? Like, people will say, hey, that's like a fake shoe. Is that something that you want to have in your portfolio? But if you're just like, hey, I want to practice, whatever the case is, that's totally A-OK. -okay. So, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, who cares if you want to do it? That's what I would say. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. When you do cleats, do you use matte acrylic finisher? I use the Liquid Kicks matte finisher on cleats also. Yep. Uh, Lucifer sends in, uh, let's see, Lucifer has a message here. Oh, that might be the message that was supposed to be attached with their uh, super chat earlier. So let me go ahead and read that one. That says, bro, any tips on roughing up the leather during prep? Like any tips for when it's enough or keep going? My first three customs were Vans and Chucks, about to do my first pair of Air Force Ones. Awesome. And uh, congrats on knocking out those first two pairs. We have a good video on our channel called Custom Air Force One. I think it might be linked in the description. Is it? Uh, Beginner's Guide How to Prep and Paint. Yeah, so if you go to the description and if you scroll down a little bit to recommended videos, you click Beginner's Guide How to Prep and Paint. That's going to be our Custom Air Force One video. We go through our entire prep process. It's like a 20-minute video. And... Um, that one will really walk you through everything that we do. And it has a lot more detail than I could go into now. Also in the description, if you haven't already, make sure you guys go ahead and check out our free PDF guide, our custom sneaker photography guide. It's totally free and it is jam packed with information and uh, it's got a couple thousand downloads, which is mind blowing. So super cool to see that. I'm always excited when uh, people say that they really learned a lot from it. So definitely make sure you go and get that if you haven't already. Uh, um, Philo17 says, hey DCF, what could be some real engaging content for a sneaker customizer? So I actually had a uh, chat with her recently. I think a sneaker customizer who has maybe one of the most, yeah, it's definitely one of the most, if not the most engaging Instagram page is gonna be Say La Vic. So it's C-E-S-T-L-A-V-I-C. And she has every form of content imaginable on her Instagram. She literally just has pictures of her in her studio. She has, of course, money shots. She has video time lapses of her working. She does real, she does Instagram TV. She does little Q and A's on there. She does little information type carousel post one of the best instagram follows um for for sneaker customizers so definitely go and check out her for um just engaging style content i still think instagram reels are really good for getting a, a lot of views and things like that like it's interesting that um for every project i do um forgive me if i sound like broken record but on our instagram page we post uh uh three post parts. So we have a money shot, we have a video or animation, and then we have a detail shot. And the videos that I post will get about one, it really varies, but like 10% of the views that I'll get if I were to just post that to Reels. So Reels are just getting huge views because Instagram's always going to push out their new features and whatnot. So I think Reels Really, really, if you're like, hey, I wanna, I wanna get views, I wanna try to grow, I think Reels are, are a huge opportunity right now. And of course, those work for TikTok also. So that, and the, the worst thing you could do is only have a page of just clean money shots. You know what I mean? You have to switch up your content so that people can engage with it. You know what I mean? And test out different things, try to get people to engage with, with every post. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Gail Saunders says, do the kids have to be Bears fans? Well, here in Chicago, there's not a, there's certainly no other option, you know what I mean? Uh, but the one thing they do have to be is White Sox fans, because we're Southsiders here. We're absolutely not uh, Cubs fans here. So. Uh, CW says, I'm taking a break from customizing and working on building my other business. How's business on your end? That's awesome to hear, uh, Cruz. Really good to hear that. What's your other business? But I haven't, uh, I didn't know you had uh, something else going on, but I'd love to hear about it, man. Business on this end, going good. Going good, man. Thank you for asking. Uh, Zuki Custom says, have you ever thought about starting a podcast? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's something that I've touched upon 
maybe in the last live that we did, but but what I want to do is I'd love to start a podcast and and I think where I think that it, it best works is um, probably having a second YouTube page where I do, you know, let's just call the podcast an hour long. And rather than the video format just being, you know, me talking, I think that the video would be cool to be me working on an, on a shoe from start to finish, but an hour worth of it. So if you're interested in watching the YouTube video, it's gonna be, you know, super chill. It's almost gonna be like our, our series customizing chill, but rather than just music going on and sort of the the sights and sounds that you get of customizing, this would just be me doing a podcast episode. And, you know, sometimes it could be Q&A, sometimes I could have a guest on, sometimes it could be maybe both of us working, I could have them film something too. I would absolutely love to do it that's very high on the list. It's just, of course, another thing in this crazy world of never-ending things that you could do uh, with with a customizing business. But I but I absolutely would love to. If you guys are interested, definitely let me know. What's cool here too? I'm not near the keyboard, but there's a way for me to add a poll. Now you can add a yeah. But I'm not near the uh, the keyboard, but I can add a poll here in the chat. It's unfortunate I can't do it from the iPad here because um, the computer's out of reach for me. But um, that's, a, that's a cool new feature that uh, YouTube added. So let's see. Okay, we got a couple other Super Chats. Let me go ahead and make sure I don't miss them. So Kickmonger Custom says, What's up, bro? Did I miss the in-person seminar you host? I absolutely have to attend. You have not. I am in the middle of trying to finalize all the details for the venue, sponsorship stuff, everything that goes into it. And I'm only going to be able to do one this year for a couple different reasons. Because, um, as I mentioned, coming earlier in the stream, come September, I'm having baby number two. So that is certainly going to keep me busy for quite a while. And what's uh, just, you got to love the timing of it. September is when football season starts. And that's always our busiest season. So that's going to be uh, tricky regardless. And I'm certainly going to be, uh, I'm going to have my uh, plate full for a few months there. So the only time I can squeeze one in is August next month. And it's going to be, I definitely would have liked more time as an announcement that like, hey, uh, you know, when you sign up, I would like there to be, you know, two months for people to be able to accommodate all of their travel. But it looks like there's probably only going to be three or four weeks. That's how short of a turnaround it's going to be from the time that we're able to announce it. And uh, that's if I can still finalize all the details. So working around the clock on getting that because we're only going to be able to do one this year. But I want to make sure that um, I get one in because I don't want to you know, not be able to do one until next March or April or something like that. Which is you know almost a year from now, which is crazy. So I really want to get one in. I, I'd love to start to be able to do these hopefully, you know, three or four times a year. And, you know, once hopefully I get more under my belt, then I'm, you know, I can kind of plan them out quicker and things like that. But in these early stages, you know, I'm trying to do a different venue than we did last time. I'd like a little bit more space. And um, I'm, of course, always trying to make the course better and whatnot. So definitely will be an announcement on that soon. And uh, for sure, it's going to be in August. Or, unfortunately, I won't be able to do one till next March. So it's going to be a super short turnaround as far as from when it's announced to when it actually is. Probably like three weeks. Um, but definitely working on that. But thank you for your super chat, Kickmonger. I think this is the first time that I've seen you here in the chat. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Eric Cooks, uh, I did answer this question, but thank you for sending in that super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, Philo17 sends in a super chat also. Thank you. What could be some real engaging content? I think I answered that one also. Thank you for sending in that super chat. Really appreciate it. Uh, Shannon O'Hara sends in a super chat also. Says it's spelled different, but it's pronounced like Shannon. Oh, okay. It's pronounced like Shannon. Okay. It's crazy spelling. Gotcha. Thank you for sending in that super chat. Really appreciate it. Q the most sends in one and says, thanks man for always giving out tips. Absolutely. Like I said, when I started this stream, this is 
this is one of my favorite things to do. I, I don't care how many times you guys ask me today, do you need to mix too soft and too thin together if you're working on fabric shoes? I'll answer it because that's how much I miss you guys. And I really, really, really want to definitely do more streams because these are just, it's so fun engaging with this community. And there's so many of you that hang out here every week and have heard me answer the same things, but still come back. So uh, yeah, absolutely love to see it. Um, and then the last one I see here, Alberto sends in a super chat. Thank you so much, Alberto. Really appreciate you guys supporting the page like that. That really goes a long way for us. And definitely, um, it, it just means a lot that you guys contribute to, to this YouTube page and this community like that. So thank you. Uh, Tara says, hi, I'm new to the sneaker world. I've always wanted to try it, but seeing your channel a few months back has inspired me to start trying it out. That's incredible to hear. Thank you for your kind words, Tara. Uh, Grimwow says, should people stop doing Louis Vuitton customs or can people still do them and not get in trouble? I do think now, certainly more so than we've heard about in the past, you are running a bit of a risk of doing them, of potentially getting your page taken down, of getting your shop taken down if it's on Etsy. Um, I don't, you know, I certainly don't want to speak because I'm not a lawyer, but as much like as far as getting sued directly from LV it seems, you know, a little bit less likely. I haven't heard of that, but you know what I mean? Hey, you're not going to get in trouble if you're doing original work. You know, I totally understand that that stuff helps, can help get eyes on your work, but you know what I mean? Right now, it sounds like that risk might be increasing, so it may not be worth it uh, at this point. But let's see. I think it would be I'm gonna, I think it would be really cool to hear if anybody if this is your first live stream, I would love to hear from you guys uh, in the chat. If you are here for the first time, go ahead and comment uh, comment toothpick gang down below if this is your first time joining us. It'd be really cool to see how many people this is their first uh, live that they're hopping into. So okay, let's see here. Deron will create says, "Hey Dylan, will the will will there be a more in-depth tutorial on Procreate design drafts? Definitely. It's been um, it's definitely been quite a while since we've done a tutorial on Photoshop or YouTube. Um, so that's definitely on the list. Uh, Procreate. I did a poll on Instagram not too long ago. Should I do the next design tutorial in Procreate or Photoshop? And Procreate totally destroyed." And uh, I definitely got a lot of questions about it when I used Procreate on the Customize and Chill episode, probably from March when we did a pair of Joker Jordan 1s. So I think it'd be kind of cool to read. Pulling out the yellow legal pad, here is a lot of the future YouTube videos that we have lined up. And um, I don't know. Let me just hear, I'm just going to... I'm going to rattle off the list and you guys comment which ones, you know, you would love to see most and I can sort of start to prioritize them. Customizing basics, episode one, two, and three. So, you know, you, you can only fit so much into a video, but breaking that down into a little bit of a series. Customizing basics, uh, customizing mistakes and how to fix them. One that I'm definitely doing soon. 10 lessons I've learned in 10 years as a customizer. That's kind of the loose title right now. How to paint any color ever. Uh, da, da, da. Wife reacts to old customizing. So having Brittany react to some of my early work, I think that could be a funny one. The secret to charging more. How to customize with no money. Instagram is killing your creativity. Six stupid things that you need for customizing. Why your customs won't sell. How to maintain your airbrush. How to prep faster. Stencil basics, one, two, and three. That's definitely one that's, uh, I've already started to film some of the portions of it, some of the, some of the video uh, portions of that. How I create 100 pieces of content per project. And ba, 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 ba. Uh, did we already say that's a different title? What did we call it? I said why your customs won't sell 
or why no one cares about your custom shoes. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And then one here, we did something like that before. How to make more money customizing. So yeah, those are some, uh, those are just some of the videos, some of the video ideas where I already have uh, a lot in mind for them. And uh, I think it'd be cool to read some of the comments on what you guys, uh, out of a lot of those, you know, just titles there. Not that I'm even going into the content of the video, but which of those titles really excites you uh, to see a video from. Uh, Avicii UK says, is it good to buy a pair purely for practicing and like using acetone to clean the designs off each time? Yes, absolutely. That's definitely something that I recommend. And you know, you could build a lot of content around each of those projects that you do and start building up your portfolio. So absolutely. Andre says, do you think it's possible to collab with footwear stores? Absolutely. I definitely do. I definitely do. I think anything's possible in the custom sneaker world as far as collabs go. Ba -ba -ba. Avicii UK says, can I try multi-layer stenciling if I'm not artistically gifted? About to get started out? Absolutely. Multi-layer stencils are, are definitely going to help. You know, because you're not going to be doing uh, as much uh, freehanding. You know what I mean? So they'll definitely help with that. Uh, Branavan says, how do, you advise, how do you advise getting the word out there about customizing? Would you put money into marketing or just pump out content against the social media algorithm? Put out a ton of content, high quality content, and paint as many pairs of shoes for your friends and family as humanly possible. So now you have a bunch of walking billboards and build a ton of content around each of those projects. Put out a, you know, use all the different forms of social media that we have nowadays, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and uh, like we just touched on with uh, Vici, I believe it was, you know, buy a pair of shoes that you can practice on, do different designs on, acetone them off and uh, do more designs on and keep building, you know, content around each of those things that you do. And that's how you'll definitely start to build up your portfolio and that's how you'll hopefully drive more clientele your way. Uh, Cameron says, hey, thanks for answering the question. There's a dollar tree around the corner. Very cool. Yeah, there's all, there's, there, it'd be kind of funny too, like a video just on customizing things that you could get from uh, the dollar store. That'd be a funny one. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's see, we have a question here. It says, I am a young teen that wants to get into customizing shoes. How and where should I start selling my custom shoes? Well, like I just said, I think the best thing that you could do is reach out to all of your friends and family. Try to get all of them to hand you over a pair of shoes. Paint as many of those shoes as you possibly can. If they're willing to pay you, awesome. If they're not, I still think that a lot of good can come from it, that you can get the practice under your belt. You can get them to then start wearing your work and telling people about it. You can get content out of it that can hopefully drive more clientele your way. And that's what I recommend to anybody who's just really trying to uh, get started out. Evan, the artist is in here, says, what's up, Dylan? Just want to show some love. Evan, thank you for joining in, buddy. Hopefully you're doing well, man. I saw you were doing uh, Instagram Live earlier. I hopped in there. With, uh, I wasn't sure who it was, but I saw it was uh, a DJ that had a huge following. So really cool, man. Really cool. Always excited to see you do that type of stuff, bud. Keep going. Uh, Brownavon says, when, when you say trying to get celebrities, how would you go about that? Would it just be a mass text or just send it to people one by one? Also, what level of celebrity should you target? C-list, etc.? I mean, hey, nowadays you can try to reach out to anybody on Instagram as, as much as sending them a DM. And uh, how many of them are you going to get to open? You never know. You know what I mean? When we were sending out a lot of DMs to football players, the way that we broke it down, if because it's, it's, it's basically just a numbers game at some point, sending out as many messages as possible. So if you can get 10% of the messages that you send out to be opened, you're doing really good. And if you can get 10% of that 10%, aka 1% of the total, to respond, you're doing really good. So if you send out 100 DMs and one person responds and actually texts you and says, I'm down, you're good. If you get 10%, if you get 10 of those people to at least open it and read it, 
you're doing good. So it's just a numbers game at some point. If that's if that's how you're trying to grow, just guerrilla marketing, doing you know, it, just turning it into a numbers game, that's definitely something that you could do. Uh, Avicii says, is it good to set up an Insta page straight away or wait until having a few designs done? Start it up right away. Nothing holding you back. If you have some content to post, definitely go for it. Uh, Clarissa here says, how do you know when someone reaches out if it's a legit collab or if they're just looking to exploit artists? I had a quotation mark photographer reach out about a collab who was kind of sketched since he would end up keeping the customized jacket. He would just pay for the materials and shipping and do a photo shoot for it. I didn't think it benefited me, so I declined the quotation mark collab with him. So um, I think the way that you could, the way that I would look through that if I was considering it, Clarissa, is I would try to find similar content that they've posted in the recent past. So he was going to do a photo shoot with the jacket for you. So, okay, I would look at the size of his following. So let's just say maybe he has 10,000 followers on Instagram. Okay, and let's say maybe on a, on a recent post, he did a photo shoot for maybe, um, it's hard to compare sometimes apple to oranges, but let's say he did a photo shoot for um, maybe, I don't know, uh, just, just a lifestyle shoot of, of like a clothing line or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, because you're talking about a customized jacket. So let's say he did something similar. Let's just say he had some lifestyle shoots on his page. And I would look at that content and I would see how did his audience engage with this? And if he had, you know, like I said, if he had 10,000 followers and maybe his post of shooting some merch line got thousands of likes and there was, you know, 100 plus comments because people were saying, hey, you know, I, I love this merch or these are really great photos or something like that, or where do I get this? Then it might be worth, okay, well, how much time am I gonna put into this jacket and what could potentially come from it? I could get some of his audience to come and view my page and then hopefully over time I could potentially convert some of those followers, you know? But if you don't have anything to compare it to and he has maybe only 500 followers on Instagram and he doesn't really have any similar content, then it's like, okay, I, I have no idea what could come from this. So what you're trying to find out is just, is there anything recently that I could reasonably expect to come from doing this? What am I going to get back from doing this collab with this person besides having some cool photos of my artwork? You know what I mean? And there's also sometimes just the benefit of, of hindsight is twenty twenty, but now you don't have that work to show just your current followers and any future followers. So you turned down the collab so you didn't do this jean jacket. But let's say that was the best jean, let's say that was like a mind-blowingly cool jean jacket that you could have posted on your Instagram currently and showing all of your current followers and any new followers that you get over the next, you know, foreseeable future. What is that worth right there? That missed opportunity. What is that, you know, that cost? that you don't have that post right now. I totally understand that you were able to do other things since you didn't take on this collab that you now have posted on your page, but what could that jacket potentially be worth? You know what I mean? Sometimes you take on the project and it's like, cool, like, yeah, I'm not getting, I may not be getting paid for it right now, but I'm still able to add something cool to my portfolio. And sometimes that has a cost, you know what I mean? Sometimes just adding something to your portfolio is worth something, you know? So that's, that's how I would look at it. But really good question. That's a great question and something that hopefully I explain that in a way that, you know, other people can start to consider that if they're ever considering doing these influencer opportunities or something like that. Uh, Cypron, hopefully I said that right, says, I have been customizing for about a year now and was curious how much you would recommend airbrushing. How much is it worth it? I absolutely think that it is a game changer as far as, um, I think that uh, it's a lot faster. I think that you get a cleaner look, airbrushing versus hand painting, and it's just something that I absolutely recommend, and I certainly wouldn't want to work without an airbrush. That's uh, one of the best ways that I could put it. Do I have to be good at art to start customizing sneakers? The way that I always, uh, the, the, the little, uh, 
tagline that I like to say for that is, well, do you have to be athletic to start playing basketball or any sport? You don't have to, but it helps. You know what I mean? And can you get good over time if you're willing to put in the work? Sure. You know what I mean? But if somebody is more naturally artistic, artistically inclined, is it going to be a little bit easier for them starting out? Sure. So yeah, anything's possible if you're willing to put in the work though. Uh, Sideline81 says, Hi Dylan, is vinyl a good opinion, uh, option to do customs after painting the shoe? I don't fully understand the question, Sideline. Is vinyl a good option to do customs after painting the shoe? Let me know what you mean again, because I'm not uh, sure I fully understand that one. Is vinyl a good option to do after painting the shoe? Yeah, you'll have to let me know a little bit more. Ba -ba -ba. John Becker says, how do you manage your time? I have about five orders in and do this as a side hustle. I'm pretty overwhelmed. I have a pretty funny kind of generic tip that probably everybody has heard before, but I've been doing it for... Um, I haven't been doing it that long, but for probably almost a month now, I've started to every day put down eight tasks that I need to complete. So essentially having a to-do list, but every single day and making sure that I literally don't stop until all eight of those tasks are complete. And you know, it's, you have to be realistic also. Sometimes, you know, if you have a pair that's going to take 10 hours but you have other stuff to do that day, it's going to be pretty hard to complete that. So, you know, set a reasonable goal. And sometimes I just put progress on uh, whatever project I'm currently working on. But there's other little things that I have to do throughout, you know, just, just writing down simple little things like catch up on emails and catch up on Instagram DMs and I want to post, I want to make a post on Instagram this day. Just sometimes little things like that, but writing down these tasks and actually crossing them off, I think can go a long way. And it, for me, it's very easy to say, to um, not write things down and just say, okay, yeah, I have that in the back of my mind. I got to do that at some point this week. And then just, I kind of never get to it. But if I put it on there for Tuesday that I have to do it, then I do it on Tuesday and it doesn't just get lost until the following Tuesday. So maybe consider that. That's something that uh, that definitely worked for me and I feel I've been a little bit more productive lately. So maybe give that a try, John. Dang, we got a lot of people that said uh, Toothpick Gang. I'm just catching up there. Very cool to see. Ton of new people in the chat. Thank you, guys. Uh, J squared custom says I got a copyright notice from Etsy about my LV Supreme custom didn't take down my page But they removed my custom good to hear that they didn't take down the page That's good to hear because I have heard some people having the page taken down So I'm glad that you didn't have it taken down and just the poster posters removed and a little bit of a, a warning for you um, Alberto here sends in another super chat. Thank you Alberto says a vid of your first custom to current would be epic we have I we do have a video that compares some of my very early work i think it is called um i think it was called i was a terrible customizer i definitely recommend checking that one out let me see what it's called i was a terrible customizer okay so the video is called i was a horrible sneaker customizer let me uh flip over here yeah so if you see this first one here it's called I Was a Horrible Sneaker Customizer. That's a good one. And then there's one more. Let me try to find it. And it's like Customizer Reacts to Early Work. Reacts to Early. Let me double check. These videos are kind of similar. Yeah, this is funny. Great. Funny thumbnail too. So if you look here, that first one says Pro Customizer Reacts to Early Work. Cringy. So that's a funny one. Definitely go check those out if you're interested in seeing uh, some of the early work. Um, okay, now we're catching up to uh, what you guys like from some of those video suggestions. Wow, I'm about 15 minutes behind in the chat here trying to get caught up. So some airbrushing for first-timers, that's one that you recommended a long time ago, Clarissa. Definitely 
that's definitely a good one. Just just f literally first time pulling an airbrush out of the box and, and what to do. Uh, ba -ba -ba, customizing basics. Mistake fixing. Uh, let's see. We have a super chat here from Sasha says, Hey Dylan, I'm an artist and shoe customizer based in Georgia. What are your tips for reaching engagement on social media platforms like Instagram? I am here for the first time and follow you toothpick gang. Thank you so much for sending in that super chat, Sasha. And uh, thank you for joining us for the first time. Very fun and very exciting to have you. What do I think are tips for reaching engagement on social media platforms? I think that you should try a lot of different things as far as what content are you able to get uh, really good engagement from on Instagram. So, you know, do you get better engagement from your video post where maybe it's some time lapses of your work? What happens if you post like a work in progress? Do you get good engagement on that? Do you get real good engagement, you know, just kind of on your money shots? your, you know, your beautiful finished poses. What about maybe just kind of um, pictures of you in your studio? Do you get good engagement on that? Maybe you go ahead and oh, something that a lot of people just don't do. Introduce yourself, a little bit of a message about who you are, maybe 10 facts about yourself. I think that anybody could do content like that. Just test out different things like that and um, see kind of what works for you. Like I've said a couple times here on the live, I think that Instagram Reels um, can get get you some really good views and engagement. And if you need to look at another uh, uh, fellow customizer who does a really good job creating really engaging content, check out uh, Sayla Vic on uh, Instagram. She does a phenomenal job. Basics one, two, and three, painting any color. <laughs> My pop says how to make your father proud as a peacock. <laughs> uh, stencil basics, the basic stencil basics. Okay, a lot of people. 100 pieces of content per project without Jason and with the newborn. Yeah, that's a, that's a good title right there too. Um, just reading on some of the... Uh, some of the uh, video suggestions that you guys really liked. Uh, Ron got Ron got Soul here says any tips on applying multi-layer stencil? Ron, have you checked out our uh, multi-layer stencil video before? We do a uh, Marilyn Monroe painting on a pair uh, on the toe box of an Air Force One. Uh, let me know if you haven't seen that one, Ron. But uh, definitely recommend that one if you haven't. But I definitely go over. That's a I think like a thirty minute video, so I definitely go over some of my uh, tips in that one. Let's see here. Okay, we have another super chat here from Prod by AET says, Never, this is live. I'm Gas, LOL. I'm the dude that made the Paranorman ones in your Discord. Love the channel for real, bro. Thank you so much for that, man. I love those Paranorman shoes. That's one of my favorite themes. You absolutely smashed those. So, really appreciate that. Zuki Custom says, do you have any advice on what I could do differently with my content? So Zuki, I would love to see, because you go balls to the wall on TikTok, I would love to see that. I would love to see how people engage with that on Instagram. You know what I mean? I also think it, it, there's, there's a different audience hanging out on Instagram than there is on TikTok. Especially for trying to sell a product, in my opinion. It's great to have a huge following on TikTok, which you absolutely do, but I think it's harder to convert a TikTok audience than it would be to convert an Instagram audience. So I would I would definitely like to see, I don't think there's enough of you on your Instagram. So I would definitely consider that, man. I think uh, the last time I was on your Instagram, a lot of it was just sort of, you know, the, the, the money shots at the end, which can absolutely work. But um, I think that that is absolutely worth a try. So also, thank you guys for hanging out here in the chat. Ton of great questions. Definitely hard to, uh, I certainly can't get to every single question, but I certainly will try to get to as many as possible. And I promise it is absolutely not personal if I don't get to any. And, and feel free to ask it again. You don't need to spam, but if it's been a while, definitely feel free to uh, 
to ask again. Alex Walter here says, Toothpick Gang, and do you sew any additional fabrics on the shoe, like print a design on a fabric and sew it onto an area of a shoe? I have not before, um, but I certainly would love to learn more about that, and I definitely think I've seen a lot of people, you know, being able to sew tongue tags on the shoes, and that stuff's very cool and can definitely uh, add to the custom, for sure, so... Sideline81 says, if you don't know how to do a portrait, do vinyl is a good option after you paint your shoe. So let me know if you mean sideline, like if you're saying if you paint the entire shoe and then do like an iron-on or, you know, like the um, heat transfer vinyl of like a, a, of a picture or something like that, if you're asking that. Or if you're just asking, can you use like a vinyl stencil to help you paint a better portrait? Let me know which of those you mean. Let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Gambit Green says, good morning. It's 8 a.m. Saturday here in Sydney. I just woke up. How much have I missed? How long has he been live? We've been going for... Started at, or just after four, so a little bit over an hour. Thank you for joining us. Just waking up and coming out to hang with us from uh, Down Under. Thank you for joining. Uh, Tom's Road says, how much dollar should I put into the paint? If you are going to use dollar, you really don't need a lot. Usually only around 5 to 10% or so, maybe about 8%. Um, but truth be told, I haven't even used any dollar in, in well over a year. I've actually only been using the uh, Liquid Kicks matte finish. It's it's you, you just apply it at the end, two coats, and uh, their matte finish is the best out there. And it's going to keep your stuff, it's going to give your stuff an incredible look. So that is definitely my recommendation. Uh, we have another super chat here from Kickmonger Custom says, yeah, bro, my first time in the live after finding you on YouTube, I became inspired and I've cranked out two customs. I'd love for you to see them. Thanks and congrats on your second kid. I have six catch up. LOL. Hoo wee. Six of them. Oh boy. Man, I don't know how you found the time to do two customs. So, so good for you on that. And, uh, thank you very much for sending in that gracious Super chat. I'd love to see some of your work if you don't mind sending me, uh, you know, a DM over on Instagram so I can check out some of those pairs. I think that would be very cool to see. So um, thank you for that, bud. Thank you, definitely. And I uh, would love to see some of the work. Uh, Mythical Beast here says, yo, 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 what is your best video on your channel for a beginner? I think that um, if you go to the description of this video, I have a section called Recommended Videos. The first two videos, I think, are must-watches if you're just starting out. One of them is very much the the uh, the tutorial on like how to actually do the custom sinker process. So I paint a, a Salmon Toe Air Force One, and it's the prep, the paint, all the supplies, it's how to do it. And the other video, there's that fly again is uh it's called advice to begin your customizing journey so that one's going to be a lot more about the business side how to actually get clients and and how to get the ball really ro rolling so one of them's very business based and one of them's very you know uh how to actually do the custom work based but definitely recommend checking those out if you're uh just in interested in getting started ba -ba -ba. We have a, another super chat here from AJ Franklin 83 sends in a $2 super chat. Thank you so much for that, AJ. Really appreciate you supporting the page in that manner. Uh, Clarissa here says, question, should we post things about our personal lives on our stories feed or only stick to the business? I know you said the audience needs to get to know the artist, but I lose followers when I do. Okay. You lose followers when you post about the personal side. That's a the reason why that's a okay is because 
clearly those aren't followers who you would ever be able to convert into sales or anything like that anyway. So me personally, I, I want to, I like to try to, at least I want to remain consistent on my, on my takes on things. Of course, takes can evolve over time, but I think for a long time, I've definitely said it's hard to build a brand without a face behind it. And when people get to know you and you, you just become so much more relatable in my opinion, and you just become, no matter what, you become so much more down to earth. You just become so much more like people feel that they can just engage with you so much more. That's why I know these lives make me seem so much more like accessible to people and that I'm, I'm hopefully come off as friendly and somebody who's willing to help. I hope that's, uh, that's my goal for these lives. And so, um, I think that, you know, if you're like, Hey, I, lo I lose some followers every time I post personal stuff. Those aren't followers who mean anything, anything. Those followers don't mean a damn thing anyway. So please, Here's the door. Don't let it hit you on the way out. And, uh, but I think it's going to, I think that it really, 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 really helps when people, uh, can get to know you more and whatever it is, it's, it's just be yourself, whatever it is about you. Like I, a lot of times I'll post on my Instagram stories, what movie I'm watching while I'm working. You know what I mean? It's not like I built an audience based around the, the movies that I watch or anything, but a lot of times I'll post something as silly as that. And sometimes that can be, uh, just incredibly engaging that I'll get a bunch of DMs of people saying like, I love that movie, I hate that movie, or just starting conversations about whatever, you know what I mean? You just start to talk to people rather than just being this this page that just posts um, their product, you know what I mean? So you just become, you be, in this digital world, you just become a person to people, which I think goes a long way and people just get to know you, which, um, we just don't get to do as much nowadays. And especially after, you know what I mean, the last year that we all went through. Just when people can get to know you more, I think it goes such a long way. So I am totally for um, letting people get to know you more. And, and I mentioned it to somebody asked the question. I think that everybody should do it. If you've never done this, this should be a challenge for everybody. Make a post of yourself on your Instagram, let it be a picture of yourself in your studio. I should almost make a video about this or, uh, or something like that. Make a post on your page and write 10 facts about yourself, whatever it is, how long you've been customizing, what your favorite food is, where you're from, um, what your favorite TV show is, what you're currently binging on Netflix, what your favorite song is, what you ate for lunch yesterday. Just post 10 facts about yourself, and uh, I think you'll be surprised at the response that you get from your followers, because then it's like, who's paying attention? Who cares to, like, engage with your stuff? And um, I think, especially as artists, we just, we all need to do more of that. So, phenomenal question. Clarissa, you have some, ooh, you have some good questions. Good questions. Oh, okay, Ron says, I'm just looking for more tips on lining it up better. Yes, absolutely. So... Ron, in that video, since you did say you watched it, I think that I posted that I do an alignment dot. So uh, this is better as a visual. So let me find a way to show this as a visual. Okay. So in that video, Let's just say I have a little star shape. Let me make it big so it's, cause I'm gonna hold it up to the camera, so. Okay, so. I think I said that you should post, you should have on all the layers of this star, you should have one little dot somewhere. But what you actually want to do is have two alignment crosses. So I'm going to, above that dot, I'm going to post a cross. And then in this other, near the bottom, I'm going to post another one of these alignment crosses. So rather than just one of those dots that you see, 
Please don't get my face camera. One sec. Yep, there we go. So you see how there's two crosses there? Because then, if you're lining it up vertically and horizontally, every layer of the stencil, then the stencil really can't shift at all. So that's a tip that a lot of people commented who had experience with uh, screen printing in that video. And uh, that's something that I've started doing on any multi-layer stencils that I've done because it uh, definitely helps lining it up. So if you see, I think I could show this. How can I show this? I think you see it on my either my Scotty or my Kobe portrait video. So if I switch over here, the Scotty one, I think you'll see the alignment crosses on the top of his head. Oh, I think it's on the shoulders. I think it's on his shoulders. Yep, look at his shoulders. How you see those two crosses? Yep, you see that cross right there? Yep. And then I think for the Kobe one, it's on his head. See that alignment cross on his head? That's going to help so that your stencils can't shift. Rather than in that multi-layer stencil video, I said just use a dot, but the alignment cross will really go a uh, long way for you. So yeah, here's uh, another quick example, guys. Uh, if we just take a look at, at some reels here, take a look at some of these views. So first one, 24,000. Next one, 9,000, 14,000, 23,000, 32, 18, 32, 26, 12. So, you know, all, every single one of my reels except one has hit 10,000 plus views. Um, the most being 66K on one. But if we go to my main feed, the views are 3,000, 4,000, 1,000. So this one has 4,000 views, 3,000 views, 4,000. 2000 so i'm posting i'm getting way more views and engagement on my reels videos than on my in feed videos so just something to consider the lab work says i'm very inspired by you and your work dylan i bought myself some angels paints and now trying customizing myself thank you well thank you for your kind words lab works really appreciate that and i am very glad that uh you know our work my work could inspire you in, in any way at all uh so sideline 81 says yeah that's exactly what i want to know well i well i said two options so oh the heat transfer one okay so the heat transfer one, is it a good idea to do a painted custom and then do a heat transfer vinyl on top? I, I, I don't want to ever be somebody who says that um, heat transfer vinyls are bad. They are not something I would ever use under any circumstance. But I also see why they work for some people. So to me, why I would never do it because there's something, in terms of running a business, the value of the work, there's no comparison of what I can sell a hand-painted portrait for versus a heat transfer vinyl portrait. And just as far as where I want to be as an artist, I don't want to be doing a heat transfer vinyl. I want to be able to do any form of art. So that's why I don't use them personally, but I totally understand why people do. So is it a good idea if that's what you want to do? But if you're, if you, it depends what your goal is. You know what I mean? If your goal is to be a, to be, to become well known as an artist and to sell very high end premium work, then I think that you should put in the work to be able to do really good portrait realism. But if you're just like, I want to sell, you know, as many pieces as possible, I don't have the time to learn, I don't, I'm not trying to sell shoes for thousands of dollars, then that's why I think it's a viable option for some people. So it's hard for me to put it in words without saying like, oh, I, I hate heat transfer vinyl and nobody should do them because that's not the case. Like there's going to be, it, it's going to work for plenty of people. And I, I see why people do it. So I don't want to just have 
the take of, oh, Dylan says he hates heat transfer vinyl and nobody should do it. That's not the case. It's just not for me personally. Uh, Eric Cook says, say Levick. Yeah, so I will put that here. And um, if an anybody's interested in checking out her page, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, follow over on Instagram. Definitely check her out. So I just wrote it in the uh, comments. Make sure you go check her out. Um, okay. Ja Custom says, Killing Creativity. Sounds interesting. Good. I, I do like that one, too. I do like that as a title. Definitely. Uh, Family First says, Does the Central Nomadic air compressor come with the hose? If you pick it up from Harbor Freight, I haven't picked up a new one in a couple years, but um, it should come with an airbrush hose. Looks like a, looks like I see a bunch of lag, unfortunately. It's, it's so weird because uh, I have the view of the streaming software set up. Anytime I look over, that's what I'm seeing. And totally fine, everything's looking nice and crisp, but then I have the, the playback on, on YouTube, which is about a 20 second delay. And of course that comes out choppy. But hopefully, um, um, at least the audio doesn't lag and you guys are able to just, you know, obviously just have this on in the background. And something like this isn't as much for the video form anyway. Hopefully everybody just kind of treats this as a, uh, you know, uh, a video that you can throw on in the background and, and listen to while you're working. Gail Saunders just said he is the Antonio Cromartie of Sneaker Customs. And that is definitely the comment of the day. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, my buddy Ty Custom, Ty Custom Kick says, what's up, Dylan? Just saying hi. Now I'm going to sleep because it's late here. Have a good one. Thank you, Ty. Really appreciate you joining in, buddy. Hopefully you're doing well. Keep crushing it as always, man. Tom's World says, how should you know when to start charging for customs? I think that that's a really good question. I think a, a great way to, because there's no, it, it's not black and white, but I think a great time to know when you should start charging for customs is when do you have people inquiring for customs? So although I give the advice that you should paint as many uh, pairs of shoes for friends and family as possible when you're just starting out, I didn't do that when I started because the first pair of shoes I ever painted was for myself. I posted them to Instagram and Facebook in 2011, and right away, I had people asking how much to do mine. And um, unfortunately, I ended up ruining some people's shoes because I wasn't using using the right product. It definitely a learning lesson, which, you know, certainly other people could learn from my mistakes. But, you know, once you have people inquiring about, hey, that looks really cool, I'm interested in having something done, then maybe it's time. Rather than, that's why I think I, I try to say, you should just reach out to friends and family to do free pairs because rather than saying, hey guys, I want to start a business. I don't have anything to show you, but can you can you pay me for for the work? I think that's a little bit harder to uh, to sell that. So great question though, Tom's World. Uh, J Max says, can a hairdryer temporarily replace, replace a heat gun if I don't have one? It should be able to for the majority of the purposes that uh, you would need a heat gun for as far as in customizing. Uh, Eric Juarez says, I actually appreciate the fact that you share personal content because it shows you care about followers by sharing your life with us. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, hopefully it just helps me come off as more relatable, you know what I mean? And something that I, I always wanna hold true about this YouTube channel and um, this page is that I think that rather than just doing brand deals and just working with companies and just working with celebrities and all that stuff, which is amazing, I still want to keep myself in the world of running a sneaker customizing business so that I can talk about all the trials and tribulations of it and how you can get to those uh brand deals and working with celebrities and and all that type of stuff and building out your business because to keep it as a long-term career it's certainly possible um to to only be doing you know what i mean just kind of uh commission-based stuff here and there but for it to be really comfortable you're going to need to grow some aspects of the business like 
you know, doing things like brand deals and, and maybe having some products or whatever the case may be. But hopefully, yeah, I, I always want to keep that relatability so that then I still feel at least somewhat qualified to talk about all these things and give out my opinion and, and feel that it's, it's worthy of anything. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's just an opinion on a lot of this stuff. But at least it can hopefully always remain an, an informed opinion. And I can hopefully still help people try to start their own custom sneaker business and whatnot. So that's definitely the uh, the goal and the reason for doing it. Absolutely. Uh, Avicii says, how, yeah, how can we join your Discord? If you click the link in the description, we have the Discord sign-up link in there. Salen Gale says, besides the 10 facts about me, what other personal things could be posted? Just a picture of you in your studio for sure could work. Um, what other personal things? What other personal things? I think even just, like, telling a story. So, like... Sometimes just what you what you post in the captions could be personal. Like, for example, you know, sometimes you'll just post the money shot and you'll, like, one of the most common captions on Instagram. Let's just say I posted a money shot of these Kanye graduation Jordan 1s. The caption would say, Kanye graduation Jordan 1s, hit me up if you're interested in customs or something like that. Like, that's an incredibly generic one. What if you posted just that... These Kanye Jordan 1 customs took me 20 took me 24 hours and halfway through I spilled blue paint all over the insoles and you just you just open up more. You know what I mean? You just tell a story about something that happened during the design process. Or halfway through I started over because I didn't like them anymore, but just open up and and let people just be able to relate to you more and just feel like more of a human. I think can go such a long way. Uh, Lee Custom Sneakers here says, how how is it possible that someone who does like medium high to sell them on Etsy for below a hundred dollars pair of Air Force Ones? I mean, they are fake shoes, or is it possible to take them that cheaper? I mean, Air Force Ones don't they probably cost more than a hundred dollars after tax, depending on where you're at? I think they're I think they're ninety dollars retail, right? And then plus tax. Um, so how's that possible? Yeah, they wouldn't be making any money. I guess there's a very small chance that they're just offering the service on Etsy and maybe people have to send in their shoes, but that seems pretty unlikely. Etsy's typically a little bit more of a, you know, final product, but, um, how's that possible? They wouldn't be making any money for it to be sustainable. You know what I mean? So that would definitely be tough. Uh, J Mac here sends in a super chat. Thank you so much for that. Jay says, I'm working on some custom Air Max, Air Max Plus for a family member. I don't have an airbrush yet. So how do I get a factory look on the mesh with brushes? Let me go ahead and pull up those shoes just so I can be sure. An Air Max Plus. Because there's so many Air Maxes out there that... Uh, okay, yeah, so an Air Max Plus. Okay, so I, basically I needed to be sure on how kind of tight the the knit or the meshes because like something for example like a like a Nike Roche it has kind of wide mesh so those are hard to paint by hand and have a clean look without having paint sort of clunk up in between the mesh but here on an Air Max on these I think it'll be okay it's going to be incredibly thin coats on the mesh for these and uh, making sure that it's really spread and it doesn't clump up in between any of those holes in the mesh that's really what you're trying to avoid so much less paint than you would be applying on a leather but really 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 making sure that you're applying incredibly thin coats so that you can try to have a nice clean consistent look but um any fabric any mesh something like that an airbrush is definitely the way to go but those <coughs> excuse me those are my tips if you are doing it by hand Uh, Eric says, I know you're a big football guy. Who do you think is winning the Euro Cup? So 
beforehand, I definitely thought uh, I, I thought France and Belgium, I think those were the two top ranked teams in the world beforehand, had a uh, had the best chance. And uh, but now Italy just I don't know how long of an unbeaten run they're on. Um, and this seems like a not good Spain team, but yet they keep winning somehow. They sort of just keep getting it done. So at this point, boy, if I if I had to bet on somebody at this point, I would say Italy. But and I think I went live a couple minutes before the uh, right when that game was ending. So let me make sure. Yeah, Italy did win two to one. So if I had to put money on somebody, I would say Italy right now. But beforehand, I certainly would have said um, France, especially from my boy Conte. Hopefully. You know, it would have been nice if he could have added a, uh, a Euro to that uh, long resume. That would have been awesome. Uh, Alex Walter says, question, have you ever considered a kind of pimp my ride type of format where you buy used pairs off of eBay, renovate and customize them, and customize them or is that just too much hassle economically? Um, that is a absolutely a video series that we highly considered that I think... Uh, um, would have loved to do and still could be really cool and uh i th i think sahil feel good threads i think he has i think his he has a series called pimp my kicks but i think that's him working with uh celebrities but um yeah i, I love pimp my ride that was one of my favorite man mtv used to be so good it's it's such a shit not that i really watch a whole lot of tv anymore anyway but it's just funny that there's so many jokes about it that MTV is literally just ridiculousness now. I'm not really sure who even watches ridiculousness. And I saw that they're starting a uh, another show that's not called ridiculousness. It's called like preciousness or something like that. And it's literally just like precious videos. So it's of like, uh, what, what I, I think it doesn't sound like preciousness doesn't sound right. It was called like cuteness or something like that. And it was just like videos of cute little kids and stuff. And I was like, man, it's crazy that this is all MTV has now when they used to have so much uh, good stuff. So um, I, I definitely think that that would make for a very cool video series, Taking You Shoes. I think uh, Art of a Visionary did something recently where he was going to start a series um, kind of renovating shoes, buying cheap use. I, I actually think you basically described... Uh, a video format series that he started and um so go check that out he, he did a great job he has he has he has great videos for sure um we have a collab with another artist coming up in two weeks not next week's video but the week after that it's uh, a video that i'm so pumped for you guys to see it's with a, another really really talented customizer and just the video format is absolutely incredible. And hopefully it comes off as well received because this is definitely a video format that I would like to start doing with a lot of uh, other customizers. So hopefully you guys enjoy that one. That'll be coming uh, in two weeks, July 14th. B -b -b Yanka says, what stencil cutter do you recommend for fresh new beginners? I, I recommend the Silhouette Cameo for anybody. That's my opinion. Our Rory Carr says, what do you do if you're worried working with uh, soft leather and you're worried sandpaper will damage the leather? There's a really, uh, first off, let me know maybe what shoes you're working on, but there's a good chance that uh, a lot of the shoes that are commonly used by customizers, you're, you're, you're not going to damage them. Um, by by using sandpaper on them. So let me know which ones you mean. Um, but yeah, a lot of people reached out to me when I posted the video of our uh, Alexander McQueen shoes and they're like, hey, did you sand them? Did you sand them? I didn't say you do it in the video. And uh, because that's a, more of a high-end shoe, the leather is insane quality wise compared to an air force one or a jordan one and a lot of those shoes like i've worked on a gucci i think it's called a Riton before that's what i did this dog portrait on uh a few months back that maybe you guys have seen 
But the reason why you may not, depending on what you're doing, you don't need to sand those higher end designer shoes as much in my opinion, is because they also, just the design of the silhouette, those shoes really don't crease because the leather, just it's the design of, shoe, design of the shoe, the quality of the leather, that shoe isn't creasing as much. So it's not like, you know, a Jordan 1 and Air Force 1 in the toe box where, you know, it creases and you're really worried about cracking there. Those shoes just aren't built the same. So uh, Rory says I'm doing some Adidas Continental and the shoes have the softer leather. You know, since you're working with finer leather uh, sandpapers, the one that I use are 400, 800, and 1500, they're not going to, they're not going to hurt the leather at all. So uh, Ozzy says, when are you guys doing another DCF class to learn how to do customs? If so, how do you apply for a spot? Thank you. Would love to have an opportunity to learn firsthand from so, such a great artist. Thank you so much for that, Ozzy. Touched on it a little bit earlier in the live, but hopefully if we are able to do this one year, it is going to be an incredibly short turnaround from sign up to when the course is. It'll be in August. Otherwise, uh, the, the, the next one we would able to do wouldn't be till March. But uh, if you're interested in making sure you stay on top of that, of course, we'll announce that on our socials. But another, uh, certainly where we'll be posting is our newsletter. So you can sign up for that in uh, the description of this video. There's a link for a newsletter sign up. Uh, Fresh Paper Media says, if you are majority of the way finished with the shoe and you want to start over, what would you do to remove all the paint or start fresh with the new shoe? These are for our customizers. So depending on you know what the shoe is, how far along you are, what you know, paints you have on there. You can acetone the paint off and start over, but you may end up um, like let's just say you took an let's say I took this shoe literally right in front of me and I wanted to start over and acetone everything off. I would end up getting a lot of this pink, this purple onto the white sole to where it would no longer I, I couldn't get it back to white because so much of the paint would end up on here with then the acetone, then it would end up like dying itself into this sole. So I would then need to do something different with the shoe as far as age the soles maybe or something like that because you can't, what you can't do with soles like this in my opinion is dye them solid. The only dye that you can do on these is like a, is like a, a little bit of a random scattered type dye. That's why aging these soles works with dye because it doesn't need to be like a solid, clean color. So like, let's just say design-wise, I wanted to take this one of these pink hues on here and dye the midsole this exact color. Let's say that was, you know, part of my design. I, in my opinion, there's no dye that you could put on here that's gonna be incredibly consistent and get that same pink all the way around. So back to the point of if I took all this paint off, I'm gonna end up getting a lot of that paint on the midsole and I'm not gonna be able to get it back to white. So that's an issue that you are very likely to run into. So you might need to rework the design a little bit to do some type of dyeing on the midsole, or like you said, you may just need to start over. Uh, Vichy UK says, who do you support in football soccer? You spoke about Conte as a Chelsea. Yes, I am a Chelsea boy. Keep the blue flag flying high. Um, okay, guys, we are going to go probably about another five minutes or so here. Yeah, we are coming up uh, two hours, not too far away. So we'll go for another five minutes or so. Uh, Yenka says, and uh, thanks, and how about an airbrush? Is it possible to buy a cheap battery-powered one to try out if I like it? Uh, Yenka, so we did a video probably about two to three months ago, and I think the video's title is like, I bought this cheap $50 airbrush so you don't have to go and watch that video and just see my thoughts on those cheap battery powered airbrushes um, and I compare it to what happens if you're willing to spend a little bit more and get a good airbrush. I don't just consider the Badger Patriot 105 a starter airbrush because it's literally the airbrush that I use every single day. So not only is it the airbrush I recommend if you're just starting out, but I'm not just starting out and that's the airbrush that I use every single day. So I think it's a really high quality airbrush. Hex Nation says, hey, what's up, DCF? Huge fan. I was the guy who DM'd you last night about the maroon suede and not finding it. My question is, how do you go about mixing dyes? Is it the same as paint mixing 
or harder. So dyes, in my opinion, are always going to be a little bit harder to work with. Also, dyes, like as far as how dyes are so much messier as as far as like you know how much you need to mix in. Those ratios are a little bit harder to pull off. So whenever possible. Um, I certainly like to use paint rather than dye, but of course, certain situations you do need to use dye. But just as far as how you go about doing it, you're gonna need to, unfortunately, probably go through a lot of dye just in terms of getting that perfect ratio to nail a color. I just think it's easier to, to it's easier to nail a color with paint because you can do things like adding in white or adding in black, whereas you can't really add in white to dye. You, like Angelus has a neutral dye, which will lighten it a little bit, but it's not like adding in white like you can to paint to get the perfect color. So let's just, uh, for example, let's say there was one billion colors that you could make with paint. Well, there's probably only 1,000 colors you could make with dye. You know what I mean? I hope, th hopefully that makes sense in terms of how specific of a, a shade or a color you can get in terms of uh, making the dye. Um, we're gonna cut uh, Avicii says, can we ever wait too long for drying the shoes between coats? Like if 15 minutes is usually okay, would half an hour be too long? No, the more dry time, it's not like that's going to make the paint any less durable or uh, anything like that. All right, so I thought it'd be cool to uh, maybe end here with a uh, checking out somebody's Instagram. So if anybody is game for that, I know that uh, everybody really gets a kick out of those. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. Whoever is interested, let me know. AJE says, what's the best tape to use so you don't get tape residue? My go-to is the Scotch 2060 green uh, rough surface tape. And then below that, I use Pro Tapes Crepe Paper. So if you check out our video, just if you just search up like De Jesus Tape, that will be one. But I also think sometimes you're just going to end up with the residue no matter what. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a glue and residue eraser handy. But um, to me, that, that's what I use. Uh, that gives me the best chance at having as little residue as possible. Certainly compared to some of the other more common just scotch masking tapes that you would pick up from a Home Depot or whatnot. Ba, ba, ba. Leslie says the best finisher. I say the Liquid Kicks matte finish. That is my favorite. Elu Crespo says, what is the best way to paint the Nike stitching on the back or tongue or best process? So to me, that's where I've really got comfortable using toothpicks. So to me, you sharpen a toothpick and there is no better tool in my opinion for doing tiny little stitching and things like that. But of course, a lot of other people just like working with, uh, you know, a really tiny detail brush. So those can absolutely work also. Okay, all right, let's do uh, Clarissa's here. That'll be a good one to do. Clarissa, you asked some great questions today and I uh, would love to try to help out any way I can. So let's see here. Let's see, Clarissa. Okay, switch on over. Quick look at the description. Bay Area artist following her dreams. Each custom pair is one of one and hand painted, self taught and color obsessed, US shipping only. So, right away, um, the bio, top notch, 10 out of 10 bio. I love all the little highlights having, you know, this is, you know, kind of like your, your branding color palette. If I had to guess, purple, pink might be your favorite color. And that obviously matches in these little story highlight covers here. So some of your stickers, very cool. Some works in progress, awesome. Some frequent Q and A's, great stuff. Some customer love, some of your customers posting their stuff, love to see it. Giveaways, really dig your story highlights there. Love that you stay active on the stories here, great stuff. Q and A's, 
Q and A's, posting on your stories and allowing people to ask you questions, or what should my next sticker design be? Great idea. Just engaging with your audience, doing things like polls, Q and A's, uh, the little quizzes, all those little features. Those are things that can can help you get more views on your story. I notice when I do those things, those types of things, I get some better engagement on my story posts and whatnot. And then taking a look at the feed here, just a quick glance. I love that there's a, a good mix of everything. There's a lot of pictures of you and your studio. There's a lot of those really clean edited money shots. Phenomenal work. Beautiful job on the Selena portrait. I mean, look at it. Let's, let's really zoom in there. That's on canvas too. Tiny, tiny on probably some women's shoes, and that is killer. What a great job. I mean, even even the, the flowers on the other shoe are, are amazing. So really great job. And um, yeah, I love that there the you get to see some of the the not finished aspects of the shoe also. So you get to see everything really come to life. So work in progress here, your clean money shot here, and then another similar you know clean money shot with an edited background on these let's see what the video is oh this was really cool this was a couple months back all of the female sneaker artists i mean i can't, can't even remember how many there was of you that did this was there like 50 or 100 or something like that but so many talented female sneaker artists out there this was really cool to see but yeah i love seeing video i think i'd Okay, so we have some video here of you painting. That's always good. 429 views too. That's really good. Some videos on Instagram TV. I've definitely mentioned reels uh, a few times in this video, so I would certainly recommend posting some reels. Ba -ba -ba. A happy birthday post. Very cool. Happy belated birthday, although it was uh, three months ago. Nevertheless, I think that, yeah, posting yourself can go a long way, but I, I'd love to see a, a 10 facts type post about you soon. Clarissa, look at Tupac here. Great. I love the uh, the really clean shots that you do with the edited backgrounds too. That's very cool. Um, I love that we also get to see your workspace. These are great shots also. Oh, so this was in March. It looks like you were doing one of those uh, March meet the maker hashtag. So... This is a really cool idea that I, I saw uh, quite a few people doing in March. I'm not sure if you did the whole month, Clarissa, but, you know, every day there's like a, a, a dedicated post. So, you know, on the third day there, it'll be post a shot of your studio. On the first day, it'll be a post a shot of you. On the second day, it'll be post a shot of your favorite piece that you've ever done. On the fifth day, it'll be post a shot of your least favorite thing that you've ever worked on. There's just a lot of cool posts that you can make out of out of doing something like that. So again, more more work in progress here. I love that you just have a really wide range of content here. I'd probably like to see um, some more reels, some more time lapses of you working and whatnot, a little bit more video, video content, but really clean, professional looking Instagram. Um, yeah great branding just in terms of like the color palette that I constantly see being pushed forward you know your entire Instagram is very colorful that of course is awesome and yeah this is just like a fun Instagram that you could kind of get lost on and and I love that you do so much different stuff that it's like there's something here for everyone so you know you could come on and be like oh yeah I'm a huge uh X-Men fan so here's something for a Wolverine but then I know somebody who's a huge Little Mermaid fan so then you have or Disney princess type work so then you have that or I'm a huge you know Selena fan you have that so it's just cool that you have you have something for everyone on your page and I really I really dig that some customers wearing their their shoes that's that's a great um engaging post because then obviously you could have potential future clients say oh man those look even better on feet now I really need to get me a pair of those so keep up keep it up keep doing uh as 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 wide range of uh you know content production that you're doing now and, and i would say try to mix in some video and whatnot some reels some time lapses of you working i think that those could uh 
could really help, but really great job, Clarissa. Okay, all right guys, so that is going to do it for me. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. We are almost up. Whoops. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in, hanging out with me for almost two hours now. I definitely want to try to, to keep doing these um, lives more often. Next time I'm just gonna post. We'll see what happens with the compression here at the end once this video goes up on the page. I'm gonna let it, uh, of course, you know, be on the page if anybody needs to revisit it later if they weren't here for the whole thing. But next time maybe I'll just try scaling down the video output to being 720p rather than the 1080p. See if that does anything for us. And uh, definitely wanna try to do these more because these are so much fun just hanging out with you guys. And uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much. Hopefully everybody has a great, safe, make sure you're safe this holiday weekend. And uh, everybody get out there and just create. All right, take care, guys.